<laughs> can give everybody the fair warning so nobody so you says start, anything you inappropriate. Start singing, go ahead. <laughs> hear that, Cindy? You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like the video well, feed is that, working this time. If it said that, so we maybe need to get rid of this ass. Yeah, right. There you go, Cindy. We're doing that yeah. up there, huh? Here we use the canoodle. That is super short. Brad, you know you can have a seat. So. Just <laughs> he doesn't ever well, sit. He's happily cut. <laughs> Six o'clock. <laughs> Probably the smart thing to do. Okay. All right, sir. So ready? Yeah, hold on. Let me fix my ears before. No, I need to fix the ears. So I can hear these people down here. Call meeting to order at six p.m. If you could please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Just six o'clock. Six o'clock. Call to order. Uh, we have a roll call for attendance. Brian Nolan. Present. Raymond Kerr is absent with cause. Maggie Smith. Here. Susan Clark. Here. Scott Danelski is here. Kevin Bertocchi. Here. Julianne Homo. Here. And Mayor Bob Lane. Here. Borough Solicitor Eric D. Here. Borough Manager Dwight Botter. Here. Code Enforcement Officer Anthony Bruni. Here. And from the Police Department, Lieutenant Mark Kukowski. Here. All right. Takes us to our first citizens' comment section of the evening. Like in all meetings uh, previously, this one is open to all uh, citizens of the borough and is reserved for anything that is on the agenda. If you need an agenda, they were on the door or on the table by the door when we first came in. Um, again, if you have any comment on anything on the agenda, we ask that you please stand, state your name, and address for public record. Reminder, we have a three-minute time limit. And Cindy, we'll start with you. Nothing tonight. Moving to the back row. All right. I'm going to have Sergeant Graham go. Okay. So we can get out of here. Sergeant Graham, I'm going to have you introduce yourself um, since you're on the agenda and just kind of give a brief overview of what it is that you're asking for so council has a chance to ask any questions. That way, you don't have to stay for the whole meeting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, thank you for inviting me into your meeting. Um, I'm going, um, Sergeant Graham with the 3 7th Military Police Company, which is right up here on uh, Beachford Road. So we are, <clears throat> we've been uh, working with the borough in the past as far as having an agreement to up and use what we refer to as Trenum Hill, where the uh, communi communications tower is up there. So we've gone up there and we've done training during the day and so forth, and there has been in the past, we'll go and we'll spend a we'll bivouac and go out for the night. Uh, we bring up porta johns we make sure we take our trash out and get the porta johns out of there. Um, from what I understand, they've used, um, been in the past, they've been able to use blank ammo and be able to shoot blanks up there. we collect all the brass, we would make sure that we contact the police and tell them in advance when we'd be up there to shoot any type of ammo like that. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to do that, we're trying to ask is it okay if we use blank ammo up there and to shoot in the future? Uh, we're looking at possibly next year right now. Uh, so we're doing the proactive approach and asking your permission to be able to do that. Because um, we actually have to go through a bunch of hoops to actually get blank ammo. We don't just keep all that with us at the unit. So if it became an option for us to be able to use that during the day, and we would never do it at night, again, we would set up uh, some procedures with you to make sure that we would let you know when we're up there, time frame we would be shooting and so forth. So in case there was any calls that came in, you would be aware of what's going on up there. So that was all we were looking to do is try and find out if it would be okay with the borough at some, at some point in the near future, or I would say next, basically starting next year. Because uh, like I said, we'd have to request AMO, we'd have to do that type of stuff, which we don't currently have. So it's just more of a precursor and just a, a proactive approach. Sergeant Graham, is the blank fire and the overnight the same event, or are those two separate events you're looking to do an overnight and then a separate training for blank fire? It would more than likely be separate, Okay. But it could be one of those we would do some firing during the day and then then spend the night. And then for the overnight, so if, uh, for procedures to get ammunition, are you looking to do overnight this year or both things next year? We're looking to just go up and spend the night overnight like this year. Okay. Go up and bivouac up over there. We want to be able to teach the soldiers to use the night vision goggles, 
Uh, we have to do the low, visib low visibility driving and so forth, which we have a lot of safety features that go along with that, um, safety protocols. Uh, but again, it was just trying to, a lot of the new soldiers now, I mean, what they're doing is um, anybody who's been in the military in the past, they used to have put up these big tents when you go out to the field. We don't do that anymore. They have all have, they'll have their own individual, what they call light fighter tents. So each soldier carries their own tent with them. They take it, set it up, and then tear it down the next morning and, and, and move back out. So no flares, anything no flares, like that? No flares, no, you know, pyro, no nothing like that. Like not, I said, our, our whole plan holes. to be overnight is just to be able to help them, teach them to set up and sleep in the field, use the night vision goggles. Uh, there is quiet time procedures that you have to look at. So if you are out in the field, your enemy doesn't hear you. So we've tried to practice some of those things. So that's you know part of the reason why we like to go up and do the local bivouac is we're five minutes away. It's perfect for us to be able to go up and use it during the day. <laughs> we, we do appreciate that up to this point. And again, we're just trying to ask permission ahead of time. Um, how many are you, do you, I mean, it might be too early to tell, or are you thinking, a couple times throughout the year, or is this a once a year type of thing? Maybe um, a couple times throughout the year. I would say two, maybe three at best. Okay, at and, and then for blank fire, how many times are we looking at that for next year? One or two times throughout the year, I would say as well. Because again, we have a lot of, we have to go get the ammo. It's either going to be out of Fort Anytown Gap, Pennsylvania, or Letter Kenny, because uh, it's not, you know, the one thing just so all the borough members know, like the weapons we keep in our vaults and everything else, we have no ammo in the building. So if anybody were to ever break in and try and get to that, they don't have ammo and weapons, so that's ruled out. So the thing is, so we have to go someplace to get the blank ammo, bring it in. We have to store it. There's procedures with that and so forth. So you said you we don't want to have to do that a whole lot. <laughs> right, right. You said you police all the brass as well, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That would be part of our, our SOPs. How, or how many guys procedures. or how many soldiers? Um, for our company coming up, we would uh, probably be around 90 to 110. Wow, that's, that's cool. That's cool. awesome. And that's just daylight. The the blank fire is yes, just daylight. absolutely. We would not take it past hmm. dusk again. Gotcha. We would make sure that whatever protocols you guys put in place, we would adhere to. Because again, we appreciate the opportunity to use them, and we don't want to we don't want to ruin that. <laughs> I'm like as long as the neighbors all know about it in advance. I, I mean, if 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 it's something the council wants to approve, knowing that we have almost a year's notice, we can you know. Um, savvy citizen flyers in the bills like we do, um, you know, with everything else. So we have a lot of ways to communicate they, out with the residents. They've done this in the past, right, right yeah. Sarge? Yes, yeah. they have. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even they they a sign out of the street. Time, so I didn't know what programs Yeah, there was, was never like, any problems. Yeah. You know, yeah. Military. There was never any complaints. Yeah, the goes off are not sounding like the regular ammo that goes off. Yeah. It's not that right. loud. Yeah. And, right. So. Any questions? Mm-mm. Okay. Sounds Great. Good. <laughs> you'll, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll hear back from us one way or the other. So I'll I'll communicate with you whether email, phone, um, whatever it is you need, and then we'll we'll go from there. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Uh, moving along, we had no exceptions to open meetings. We had no open or no uh, executive sessions since our last uh, meeting. The minutes from March 12, 2024 have been posted online. Can I have a motion to approve the 3-12-2024 regular meeting minutes? So moved. Okay. Kevin in the, on the first, Lillian on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are six. Passes unanimously six. Nothing. We did have two communications come in. One was from um, Sergeant Grimm that was just here. Again, just about everything that he talked about is in the letter. I don't need to read it verbatim, but he does talk about picking up his empty brass, brass, excuse me, um, the tactics. Uh, he does talk about the night training, that there would be no firing of weapons during the night training. And he talks about the low visibility in some of the night driving. So. That is the first one that came in. The second one is a letter from Blackburns. Blackburns ownership is having their company picnic on Friday, June 21st, 2024, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the administrative building located at the corner of Corbett Street, 1st Avenue and 2nd Avenue. They are requesting Corbett Street to be blocked between 1st Avenue and 2nd Avenue from noon to 10 p.m. on the day of that event. That will give them time to set up and tear down for the event. A private company event. They will have signage placed at our administration lot to alert the public. This is quote unquote a private event. 
Signed, Randy Prunty, Business Development Manager, Blackburns. So those are the two communications that have come into the borough. And I believe there are motions for both of those on the agenda this evening. Mr. Mayor, you're up. Okay. Um, <coughs> for the monthly meeting, this includes Brackbridge Burr as well uh, for um, March. Um, major crimes were up by 16. Uh, last month they were 23. This month they were 39. Again, that's... Uh, Accident, hits and runs, assaults, burglary, criminal mischief, domestics, disturbances, fights, robberies, sexual assault, terrorist threats, and trespassing uh, along with warrants. Uh, all other call calls are up by 44. Uh, for the month of March, it was 174. Last month, it was 130. Um, on view arrest, it's down by one. Uh, last month, it was four. This month, it was three. Uh, summons arrested arrestors uh, are up by four. This month it was nine, and last month it was five. And the warrants are up this month as well. Uh, five to last month was two, a total of 17 compared to last month. Uh, traffic citations were up by 14 this month. Last month uh, there was two, this month there was 16. And the non-traffic uh, citations is up as well by two. This month we had seven, and last month we had five. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, President's report. Very briefly, um, back on, I guess that's a week ago today, um, uh, I attended a, an EMS, I guess we'll call it a forum, that was held up at Citizens Hose. Brad, you were there. Uh, along with some other uh, local EMS agencies from up and down the valley. Uh, Mandy Steele was there. I don't remember. I apologize to the gentleman that had that presentation. Um, but it's, we are all aware of, of the current situation with EMS, um, and we've gotten Brad's letter. Uh, but it seems to be gaining some traction. Finally got a letter in the newspaper, or an article in the newspaper after... I don't know how long, but um, Mandy Steele was there. I wasn't able to stay for the whole thing, but it, I think the conversation is finally starting to gain some traction. Um, and I hope that some of the other municipalities that you serve, you know, start to get on board with what we want to do here as a borough and help support you. This past weekend, I was fortunate enough to attend the uh, Allegheny League of Municipalities Spring Educational Conference. Um, not surprisingly, EMS was a major, uh, major topic. A session on EMS. I can make some copies of this. Um, the it's, it's interesting, Susan. I'm sure you know all about this, but there's a a um, organization called CC4 EMS Citizens Concerned for EMS. There's some. Pretty mind-blowing statistics in here about what you guys do, how much it costs, what kind of money you get back, what kind of timetable you get. I mean, it was it was by far probably the most popular uh, session that I went to. I mean, it was packed. Mr. President, Mr. Manager, I don't want to be out of line, but I want to uh, extend to us our appreciation for you attending. I am aware that it was challenging scheduling here that night of Mandy's meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm also aware that you elected voluntarily to go to that uh, at the Elm Conference. Um, we appreciate it. It was good to see the representation from the communities. Again, I know you folks were all busy on council, specifically us at that Mandy Steele meeting, serving five municipalities. We had four of our five municipalities rest represented. So don't want to be out of line, but thanks, okay. Scott and uh, Dwight, for what you've been doing, along with all the other ones. Um. But that, that was a big topic. Tax collection was another big topic, uh, especially delinquent taxes. Uh, there are quite a few organizations up there that, that are um, willing to offer with some of our delinquent um, tax collection, which, again, is not a Trenum issue. It's a, it's a whole county-wide issue. And then finally, we were named a, and I will give this to you, Mr. Manager, we were named a 
<laughs> Judy, 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 Judy. Oh, not yet. You have to wait till um, the presentation. <laughs> yes, the a 2024 banner community to the borough of Trenum, and I was fortunate enough to accept our award on Saturday afternoon. First time I had accepted without Miss Fox, which is a little weird. Carrie, if you're watching, but again, we were awarded the 2024 Banner Community Award for the Borough of Trenum. So, good job, Trenum. <laughs> See, I told you, short, sweet. Yeah. And that's all I have. Wait till next month. That's right. Next month will be double. Yeah. All right. Mr. Solicitor. Yes, uh, I completed the conditional use decision regarding Lundberg and Legends of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, assisting Dwight and Anthony and various other uh, borough issues during the last month. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Lieutenant, do you have anything to add to what Bob talked about? Nothing to read. Mr. Bruni, code officer. Uh, yes, uh, the, the vote for that conditional use will be coming up later. Um, and Friday, uh, I believe White's going with me to that meeting with the COG for the, the demolition. We are. Um, that duplex on the 500 block of uh, East 8th Avenue, we've been uh, waiting for um, some movement on, on that. We're hoping that, hoping that demolition happens soon. Um, it's been long coming. So, two years. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> the engineer report is posted online. And a reminder to properly dispose of used motor oil, oil based paint, solvents, household cleaners, and other hazardous chemicals. Um, my wife reminded me, it's not on here, but my wife reminded me, at least this week, I believe, is bulk week for garbage. Because um, we've got some bulk items that we are going to get rid of. So, do you have anything bulk, not electronics? And not building materials. Not building materials. Not but tires or car parts. Like recliner or some of that kind of yeah, stuff. Something like that. Um, tomorrow is the day, or excuse me, this week is the week for bulk items. So, Mr. Manager. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Um, so, the 2023 audit has started. Um, just like every other year, that'll be going on for the next couple of months. Once the audit is completed, the re results will come to council and to um, out to the public. I am happy to announce, if you remember last month, we ratified a application for the grant for the police department for $82,500. We have been awarded that grant. Um, so that is for the additional e-ticketing items in the police car, some cameras, and then some much needed door replacements for safety and security on the um, police side of the building as well as the doors over here. Um, so we should see that money in the next couple of weeks and we can start getting uh, all of the work completed on that. In a similar note, in case anybody is curious, we went back and tallied how many grants we've actually applied for and what we've received in the last couple of years. So since 2019, you'll see in these documents. Miss Cindy, I can get you one of these if you would like it sometime. Um, Trenton Borough, since 2019, <laughs> has received um, about $2.99 million worth of grants. That is a 65% award rate, which is pretty good. Um, the average is somewhere around 30 to 40%. So Trenton Borough is um, pretty darn good at getting these grants. Um, part of it is persistence, but a lot of it is planning um, and insight from the staff. When they, when Anthony comes to me and says, hey, we need to do something X, Y, and Z, and gives me a solid reason to do it, we have enough information um, to write a complete grant proposal. Um, and then sometimes it's just persistence and following up on there. So I just wanted to make a note and thank all of the staff for all the work that they've done over the, the years. Um, you know, that's $3 million almost that does not come from taxpayers, uh, at least Toronto local taxpayers, uh, the projects and things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, night market is coming up, as previously noted. All of those things are online. Spring cleanup, which um, the Toronto Rec Board is hosting alongside um, Brackenridge and Harrison. I'm also happy to announce that after much planning, and I think we announced it before, but 
April 28th in the marina and uh, concert with cleanup day will be our first um, dumpster day. So that is free for residents of Toronto <laughs> Borough where they can come bring a car load of bulk items, a truck load or whatever, offload it in the dumpster. Many other towns do this to great success. If you are not from Tarentum, you still can um, come offload items, but there is a cost associated with that in cash. And the reason being is because the Tarentum residents are, um, you know, they pay their garbage bill monthly. And so we built this into the cost of everything last year in the budget. So the extra 30 some odd cents people are paying um, per month ends up going to making sure that there's enough um, time throughout the year to, to get rid of all those other bulk items since there's only a once a week bulk item now. So that's coming up. Um, the zoning map and ordinance update. So Anthony and I met recently with the planning committee to talk about the additional proposed changes for the zoning map. Um, we only had one minor change since we last talked about this last month. Um, and what we did is we restricted some of the proposed zoning changes um, to keep them as they were. So specifically between um, First Avenue in the Riverfront Park, not rezoning that. Um, we didn't feel that it was necessary to rezone an entire section of that area for residents um, and move their zoning from mixed use to commercial or industrial. Um, and it can create some unnecessary problems for them. So at this point, the uh, engineers will need to update the map one final time, and then that will go to the Allegheny County planning. Um, and then from there, once their comments are back, then we will host a public meeting. We'll post the properties, uh, and hopefully that will finalize the three, four years worth of changes for the zoning map and ordinances. 10th and Corbett. We were up there today, so we um, went with the police and the fire department to test the um, emergency functions. The, everything works fine. So we are nearing completion of 10th and Corbett. There is a 30-day wait period for PennDOT just to make sure that everything works as it should continuously. That will start tomorrow. Um, there's a few other items that we have to clean up. There's some wooden poles up there that once the 30 days have been up, that some of those poles will come out of there and we'll finish filling in the sidewalk. Uh, there's a few other things that we have to do there as well, but we're waiting on some of the telecommunications company on their line. So we expect all of that to be completed within the next 30 to 45 days, like done, done. Wait, Mr. Was, Mayor. Was the plate readers mm -hmm. tested as well? No, the play readers haven't been tested. Just, just the um, lights. The lights, side. right? Okay. Plate readers. I don't believe we haven't installed those yet. No. Um, so that's tenth and Corbett. And then the other thing you're going to see later on in the agenda mm -hmm. is a crossing guard location for tenth and Corbett. So the chief of Kulik and I talked about this, and then we reached out to the school district about it, um, but. Essentially, after evaluation, the borough has determined that the current deployment of a crossing guard on the one-way street um, at 9th and Corbett serving our local school is not justified for the upcoming school year, so next school year. This decision is based on a comprehensive assessment of pedestrian traffic which indicates that only four students regularly utilize this crossing. The safety of our students is paramount, but we must also ensure that our resources are allocated efficiently and effectively. The location's low volume of pedestrian traffic does not meet the threshold typically required to warrant a dedicated crossing guard. Instead, we believe that some alternative safety measures such as enhanced signage, improved street markings, and possibly continued education on road safety can provide adequate protection for the students. We understand that any changes in safety protocols may raise concerns, and we want to assure everyone that the submission was made with the utmost consideration for the well-being of students in town. The borough remains committed to providing a safe environment for all of our residents and will continue to monitor the situation and ready to make adjustments as necessary if council approves the changes. Um, essentially, it, uh, we split a crossing guard with, all the crossing guard positions are split with the school district. So in a given year, it costs us about $9,000 for a crossing guard. So we pay about 4,500. Um, they are becoming increasingly difficult to find for replacements with the low volume of students that are there as well as the cost and it being a one-way street the borough doesn't feel um, that it's it is 
in our best interest to keep that position there as is. The other two crossing guard positions will stay as they are. Um, and again, we did reach out to the school for there to give, say, hey, do you have any concerns about this? And they did their own count. You'll see their response in your folders. They also counted about four students, two of which have parents that come with them on a one way. Their biggest concern was the fact that people just don't stop or slow down on the one way. Um, I believe that could be addressed through some additional signage um, that would help mitigate that issue. But with the ever increasing cost of everything, um, the borough is taking a hard look at everything across the board from unnecessary subscriptions, things that don't make a lot of economic sense so that we don't have to continually raise taxes, electric prices, all of these other things to meet requirements. Um, $4,500 doesn't sound like a lot, but when you take that with an with you know 20 other items that are $4,500, that really adds up. So um, you'll see that on the agenda for later tonight. Is there any, <coughs> Mark, Bob, do you got anything else to add I, to that? I think the signs like child crossing, yeah. three places, I mean, coming up the hill, down the hill, and on one way, I think that would be a good addition there. Yeah, very good shit, very good kids. I've sat up there numerous times and haven't even crossed anybody, unfortunately. Okay. Um, other updates are the traditional league links, the Allegheny County newsletter, the Pennsylvania Municipal Electric Association newsletter, and then the sheriff's sales um, listings. And that is everything that I have. All right. Thank you, sir. Moving on to, there is no postponed business. Moving on to new business. Can I have a motion to pay the borough bills for the month of March 2024? So moved. Second. Ryan on the first, Kevin on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. Uh, before I ask for a motion for resolution 24 07, anything you want to talk about the cable franchise agreement? Um, no, just as a reminder, we had a meeting at 5 o'clock today um, to hear any issues or concerns about this. This um, is a pretty routine contract. The <coughs> contract will be for 10 years, and then there'll be another cable franchise hearing after that. Um, just to reiterate, although Comcast is the only one here, it does not lock out anybody from being here. If Verizon decided that they wanted to provide services in Terenum Borough, Verizon could do that if they decided it was worth the cost. So the borough really has no say one way or another. We are not preventing any other um, competition from being in the borough. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve resolution 24-07, resolution of Trenton Borough authorizing execution of cable franchise agreement with Comcast of Pennsylvania, LLC. So moved. Second. Luann on the first, Kevin on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. Uh, any comment on 24 08 or for Dwarf Folk Southern Railroad Company? Yes. Um, I'm going to be a little less professional than I normally am. The crossing at Corbett and the Railroad is terrible, just awful. Something needs to be done about it. Um, <laughs> That is the responsibility of Norfolk Southern. It is directly under, on, around the railroad tracks. So unfortunately, we can't go up there and really do anything without them, uh, without their approval. So what this resolution is, is urging them to get off their duffs and come out and fix that area. Um, we will also file this with um, our congressmen so that they can push it with Norfolk Southern anyway. Um, I am unsure of our success rate in getting Norfolk Southern to do something, but I do believe it is something that we should address and at least make the opinion of the locality known. Corbett Street? Yes. What about Lock? Lock. 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 Can, I, can I offer? Lock is I, twice we, as bad. We can add another resolution for Lock. Lock was fixed once here not too long yeah. ago, but I went across there today and I thought, oh my God, this again. is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have the one for Corbett that I know about. Um, what I can do is I can add Lock for next month as a resolution as well. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. everyone's in agreement and that it's bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
What is the, the I'm just curious. Do they only like what is the what is the responsibility? You know, so this is the track. Like, there's it, so many it, feet. I was going to say like what the the footage is yes. like on both sides of the. There's so many feet. It's like anytime, even if you want to put up a fence, a sign, a pole, do anything, you have to get permission from the railroad company. So um, even if we wanted to fix it, we can't just no, you know, we can't no. temporary. Well, and the other the other things that you run into there too. So like if we decided to fix that and we do it inappropriately because we don't have permission and a train derails, then that's the line that like you don't that's not something that we mess with, right? So like I understand that people get frustrated because the potholes and things in there, but we just we cannot mess with the railroads. <laughs> I have a motion to approve resolution 24-08, resolution of the borough of Trenton County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, requesting Norfolk Southern Railroad Company to repair roadway at Corbett Street. Motion. Second. Susan, was that you? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Brian on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6-0. Uh, the MOU between the Trenton Borough the Department and the Allegheny County District Attorney. Any comment, question? Uh, yeah, this is that. This is an MOU that um, the DA's office sent out some communication uh, recently, pursuant to Act 22 of 2017, um, giving municipalities the option to basically secede our right to know authority over to them for video. Um, so it adds an extra layer of protection for the municipality when it comes to things like police video and things like that. It takes it out of our hands and gives the authority over to the DA's office. Um, the chief uh, is in agreement with that, and his recommendation is that we do sign this. After re reviewing it and reading it and discussing it with the police department, I am in agreement that um, it adds that extra layer of protection for the municipality as well as gives some more impartiality to residents. Um, that it is taken away from the municipality and given directly to the DA's office. Perfect. Any other comments? No? It falls in line with our policy and procedure anyhow that was written by the, and recommended by the Chiefs of Police Association. So it's just, in my opinion, just falls in line with that. Great. <laughs> Can I have a motion to approve the MOU between Trenton Borough Police Department and Allegheny County District Attorney Office pursuant to Act 22 of 2017? Motion. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, we're going to let the ladies take it. Susan and Maggie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6-0. I know we talked about the grant money for the riverfront development. Any questions before I ask for a motion? I just want to point out that the gentleman that was part of this um, grant that's going to be helping us do the planning for the riverfront is the same gentleman and group that did the comprehensive multi-municipal plan for us, Brackenridge and Harrison, not too long ago that was very well done. Um, in my opinion, it involved lots of public input from multiple communities. So it'll be that same group. And just as a reminder, we are doing this in tandem with Cheswick, but we are the lead because we have a little bit more planning experience um, and going forward. And this is only one part of all the necessary meetings and upgrades to the riverfront and park developments. It's a multi-stage process. Can I have a motion to approve the agreement for consulting services? Again, this is part of the approved PFPC grant for Trenum and Chesapeake Riverfront and Development. So moved. Second. Brian on the first, Maggie on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passage unanimously 6 0. Anthony, uh, vacant property parcel 1223 N 238. This is the borough one, right? This is actually us. It's us, yeah. So this is the lot that is next to, um, so if you have Summit Hose Company, one, two, it's the third lot over, or conversely, it's the lot left to what used to be the old boxing rink. Um, it is vacant, and right now people use it to store a bunch of tires and a bunch of other garbage on there. Um, so what we are proposing is that we go through the vacant property program, we acquire the land, which then gives us the right to go on there and clean it up, put up a fence, and keep it a little bit more tidy, but also gives us more options in the future because we will own land from Summit the whole way to the boxing ring. 
That's that's what that would be a total of what three mega mods then summit. Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and the ability to fence it in will prevent people from dumping tires. Um, it's an ongoing issue. Right. Can I have a motion to approve an application to Allegheny County vacant property program for parcel 1223-N-238? So moved. Second. Maggie on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. I drive past it every day. I know, I've already <laughs> looked at it, so it's yeah. giving me anxiety. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have a motion to approve hiring K. Golem Bisky? You were close, Besky. Golem Besky, I apologize. You should have asked Mark. He would have helped you. Um, as a temporary part-time <laughs> filling crossing guard, effective uh, April 10th, 2024. So moved. Second. Leanne on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Scott, Six excuse me, can I drop back to that vacant lot for mm -hmm. just a second? Uh, if that property is acquired, there's a plan in place that... Um, that Highland Tire, uh, the board will clean up them tires, and Highland Tire agreed to take them for what they pay to get rid of them. Uh, the board will haul them over to Highland Tire here at a cost uh, of the board for three dollars a tire. And by the looks of it, it look, there looks to be like fifty maybe down there. There's a lot. There's, There's a, a lot. There's a lot. But the plan is in place, so we have the number for the guy Good. to contact once we acquire that property. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are we? we already talked about uh, removing the crossing guard position. Any questions or comments uh, after what Dwight talked about, all of the numbers? Can I have a motion to remove the crossing guard position from 9th and Corbett starting with the 2024 2025 school year and beyond? So moved. Second. Brian on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. Um, any questions, comments for the uh, notice of the non renewal for the DQE contract? Um, yeah, just we have several agreements in the municipality, some of them which auto renew forever. Um, I am generally not in favor of at least not reviewing the terms and conditions. Um, we're not always getting the best deal that we should. This particular contract um, has not been looked at since 2005, which means the rates that the borough is receiving has not been updated or changed since 2005. So we're still getting 2005 um, poll attachment rates in 2024 so what we are proposing here is we send a non-renewal because this renews every year which will then force the company to negotiate with us on updating the rates so that it can be renewed for um, 2025. We have a motion to send notice of non-renewal for DQE contract pursuant to the 2005 contract. So moved. Second. Maggie on the first, Brian on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. Can I have a motion to approve Firehouse Subs grant application for Summit Hose Generator in the amount of $12,316.48? Motion. Second. Susan on the first, Brian on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously 6-0. Um, I know we've talked about the pump house dredging, but any questions or comments before we ask for a motion? Yeah, the reason, um, so they have to do it by hour and by barge, and so there's an estimated price range. Uh, as a reminder, last year we had this scheduled. We didn't go through with it, um, so we carried over $100,000 this year to do the dredging. Uh, I will also note that I don't want to say more importantly, but um, we are also having them do an exploration of a pipe that's already in the plant. And so the reason that we have to do dredging so often is because of the intake and everything kind of comes into the intake and then it settles and it's big money to take it out. 
what a lot of other places do around us is they actually have a pipe that goes out into the river and the water goes in through the pipe. We do have a pipe out there, but it was not originally designed for intake. Um, it's more of a, an excess and overflow. The salvage and the dredging company, um, they're going to do an exploration about how far it goes out and what kind of shape it's in. If it's in decent shape, we believe it could be retrofitted uh, so that we could do, we could actually intake water from that pipe from the river, which means for budget purposes, um, we would not have to do massive intake dredging every two to three years. What we would do instead is we would spend, instead of spending $160,000 every three years, we'd spend $20,000 every year to clean out uh, around that pipe. It would be much more cost effective for the borough uh, to do this type of intake instead of just the method that we have now. So um, we felt that it's worth the cost of doing the exploration for the potential long-term savings that it would, it, you know, the borough would gain from that. Right, Cindy? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We're saving money. Trying to. That's the name of the game. I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. Can I have a motion to approve dredging of the pump house intake for an estimated cost of $68,000 to a hundred and sixty thousand dollars So moved. Second. Kevin on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. My favorite subject, 215 Corbett. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the fourth time in the last 18 months, 215 Corbett. We've had um, several different ideas from several council members, from the mayor, from borough staff. We originally Again, we planned on putting a gazebo out there. The cost ballooned out of control. We didn't feel it was a fiscal, um, it wasn't fiscally responsible to spend forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a gazebo um, for that little area. So um, after much deliberation and um, what we are suggesting is taking the mayor's suggestion of putting pavers down over there, uh, putting in a few of the local like cement benches and things like that for seating areas and putting a few um, planters around. So basically is leveling it off, putting a few seating items there, and then in the future, if the borough wishes to still go after the gazebo or develop it further, then we can apply for some grant money. But right now it just does something for, instead of leaving it vacant, it, it kind of creates a sitting place for uh, night market, coffee shop, whatever else it is, um, at a lower cost that will be done in house by Public Works. Wait, does that so, include a camera? Not right now. Okay. Um, there were talks about it. Um, we have, you know, I know that we're still talking with some of these other companies about putting some other camera items in and around town. Eventually, um, I would hope so. But um, right now, the proposal is just to get something there. What's what's been happening is I'm seeing other individuals and companies that are parking in that lot. Just this week we had people that were putting pipes and cement ruining in the grass and all kinds of stuff. So people are um, <laughs> uh, without something that's clearly there that says, hey, this is the borough, people are tearing it up and, and using it already. Um, so we would like to just put some simple items in there for now and then give more time for further build up if necessary. You can also, this is where we had imagined the, the extra fake Christmas tree putting it there. I know that we have the one up by the tracks, but it's still growing. It's gonna be many years yet. Um, as for that, there's a place for when the parade comes by for almost like a grandstand type of thing. Um, it could be used for multiple things. I've had several people ask if it was finished about using it for um, vendors for various things, specifically during night market about housing people there because it has electricity there for vendors. So there's a whole bunch of things that could be done with it, but it's been just sitting doing nothing for the last, you know, year. A little garbage can there also, I take it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> At least one. I, yeah. I really don't think it'll be a problem that's uh, if you being the location where it is. Uh, that's heavily traveled there during the day, and at nighttime it's pretty well lit in there. So yeah. yeah. I don't think it'll be a problem. <clears throat> okay. 
Can I have a motion to approve the installation of pavers, planters, tables, and chairs by PW at 215 Corbett Street for a cost not to exceed $15,000? So moved. Second. Maggie on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. Um, Eric already talked about the uh, conditional use stuff for Legends of Pittsburgh. Does anybody have any questions or comments before I ask for a motion? Um, something that was brought up to me by a local resident is maybe a stop sign at Grantham at West 8th to slow traffic down. But that's just a suggestion. That was brought to me. <clears throat> They'd have to be a traffic study right. there, right? Yeah. Right. I, I knew that that was not in yeah. our It's no our different purview. than what we did on Center Street. No, I, I, but uh, it's just a suggestion that was brought up. You could do the same as they did on Center with slow, you know, slow, slow paint on the road, yeah. Paint yeah. on the road. Can I have a motion to approve the conditional use decision for Legends of Pittsburgh? So moved. Second. Luann on the first, Susan on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6-0. Next one is the road closure um, that Blackburns is asking for for their company picnic. Um, in 7 Can I have a motion to approve the road closure between 1st and 2nd Avenue on July 21st, 2024 from 3 to 9 p.m.? Second. Kevin on the 1st, Brian on the 2nd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously 6-0. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the request from the U.S. Army uh, to allow the overnight training in the blank fire exercise? So moved. Second. Maggie on the first, Luann on the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Unanimously, six minutes. She's close. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. It's not to say We all right. want to get little flags and just That's do this. Not, not to say without rain. The visual would be better. I'd love to see the flags. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah, flags. I would see it. My eyes are better than my ears. It's throw with a like, long stick. Just no, we just went the little, with the little sinker at the bottom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, any question on the ordinance amendment 23-06 before, or any comment before I ask uh, for a motion? No, just as a reminder, this clarifies the actual formula for meter multiplier so people don't have to guess or get a degree in electrical engineering to figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I have a motion to approve Ordinance 23-06, Amendment, Ordinance of the Borough of Trenum County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, establishing the rules and regulations of the Trenum Borough Electric Department and setting forth the rates to be charged by the borough for the furnishing of electricity to the residents of Trenum Borough. Motion. Second. Susan on the first, Brian on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously 6 0. There you go. You're up. Right. <laughs> Mr. Pataki, you're up. ABN COG. Okay, Scott and I attended the uh, COG yearly dinner at the Oakmont Yacht Club. Uh, we had a pretty good time. A lot of dignitaries there as far as Mandy Steele, Sarah in Amarado. John McCann, Andrew, and our county treasurer. I'm not going to whack that name up. Um, <laughs> I said Corey O'Connor was there. I didn't get to see him at our last COG meeting. We did talk about a lot of the river trail, and we don't have any issues, but I think Oakmont and Harmer has some issues because they want them to go on Freeport Road. <laughs> so they're not too happy with that at the moment. Um, they're not having any help from the railroad. They were hoping the railroad <laughs> might be able to help, but uh, they're not having any help from them. So that is all for that. Um, next is business advisory. We are having our meeting this month at the Manos Gallery. It will be 
on the 24th at noon, hosted by Brian and Ernesto. And that's all for that. Um, finance and administration. <laughs> everything can be online. Everything can be online. I want to hear it now. I don't want to go. No, you don't want to hear it. I have too many papers. I don't want to go home and have to go Anything else? <laughs> I think you're done for a while. Thank God. For you get a break. Uh, Miss Smith, Parks and Rec. Yes, uh, the Trenum Rec Board uh, had their meeting on, at March, on March 26th at 6 p.m. Um, the annual Easter egg hunt took place on March 30th. The weather held out. It was a nice day. The kids had a blast. Um, the Rec Board wanted to say a big thank you, of course, to the Women of the Moose for assisting the Rec Board in the event, and also thanks to Trenum Police and Public Works for their help. Uh, April 11th at 1 p.m. is the Spring Senior Bingo at Dalton's Edge. Um, they ask if you want to attend to RSVP to carry. Uh, and the crossroads of the Allegheny Valley Trenum Magazine will be out this month. And lastly, Wendy Kahn was appointed as their new appointed member of the rec board. So. Oh, cool. I must said Willie. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, give a shout out to the um, wait, 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 there's one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Would this fall under this? I have it. Well, you have to follow the rules you're right. like, go for it. That's a good thing. Well, I wanted to bring up, um, I don't think there's enough um, people know all the great things that happens at our local little heritage museum. Um, I grabbed one of the flyers the last time. Um, they have lots of great, great events. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody comes. And nobody, yeah. Like I said, I attended the Halloween thing last year and, you know, Is it's fun. Is there a fun. way that we can hand out other places? You mean flyers? Yeah, flyers, well, other Dwight places. Dwight had mentioned once we talked to the museum about putting it on like Savvy Citizen or something like that, putting, at least putting this up somewhere for people to be able yeah, to see it. it so. I mean, it's on Facebook and people yeah. are sharing it on yeah. Facebook. But <laughs> other than that, right. it's not really out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And a face, um, they do have their own Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So if people would get on their Facebook page and share from that, just sign up to see what all the events are that they're having. Right. I mean, they've had a lot of, like, little concerts up there. They've had book signings. They had Dwight up there to talk. And <laughs> we hear enough about him. <laughs> about him. Yeah, he did. It was very interesting, and only two council members showed up to hear him. And um, <laughs> we can love him here. He paid, he paid yeah. to show up. <laughs> <laughs> But there are a lot of interesting things up there, a lot of historical things going on. And May 11th, which is Henry Brackenridge's birthday, uh, they're having an event called Staycation, which means that you can go on vacation here in Tarentum or surrounding areas without going out of town and spending a ton of money. And there will be different vendors up there, including myself, and I'll be advertising for the cemetery. <laughs> and anybody that wants to come and buy a lot, come and see me. <laughs> or if anybody wants to go on like a little tour of the cemetery. But, you know, I'll be there and passing things out and selling things. But there will be people there like from, say, um, Apollo Historical Society, Springdale Historical Society. There will be different libraries there. It will be Rachel Carson. Um, just all kinds of people are going to be there that day passing out their information so that you can see where you can go in this area because it's a very historical area. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be from 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock on May 11th. And I think that'll be a great thing to come and see and to celebrate Henry. Okay. Because if it yeah. wasn't for him, we wouldn't have all this land. Like I said, there's lots of little cool things going on. There's a lot going on. I would say get on their Facebook page, follow them, and you can also follow Trenum History with Cindy and see 
different events that are going on. Now we're in commercial. Yeah, I mean, how long do you want me to talk? Yeah, three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Dwight, we're just discussing that. Yeah. 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 Nothing was, I don't know. Is Salve Citizen an option? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mr. Dolan, property yeah. health and zoning. Oh, well, there's stuff that's already been brought up with nothing new. <laughs> We need a report from you once. Yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, Susan, public safety. Uh, I have the uh, the report, the March uh, report from Eureka to, uh, for calls. Um, the monthly activity summary, uh, fire and related uh, calls 27, uh, total personal hours 39, uh, seven commercial fire alarms, four motor vehicle accidents, one carbon monoxide, excuse me, two carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, rapid intervention te uh, team, there was two calls for a dryer fire and a sparking outlet. One odor investigation, one residential fire alarm, one false dispatch, one vehicle fire, one structure collapse. And of trash fires, transformers, brush fires, physical rescues, EMS assist, and water conditions in residential and commercial uh, structures, one. We had four mutual aid responses, uh, three of them into Harrison Township, one into Springdale Borough. EMS calls were 139 for total personnel hours, personnel hours of 611, and company training hours were 35. Uh, Eureka also participated in community outreach for a Boy Scout CPR demonstration, a the Trenton Borough Council meeting, station fire prevention tour, um, the Allegheny County Emergency Services and the EMS Chiefs Joint Quarterly Meeting and the Easter Egg Hunt, we were there too. So that's uh, for uh, Eureka. I don't have a report or Summit or Highland. Question. On the Eureka EMS, do you mm -hmm. ever break it down per community? Like how many times you go to East Deer, how many times Brackridge, how many yes, times Yes, we Trenum? do, but not on a regular basis. Oh, if okay. it's something that, that you want to break down on a regular basis, no, but yeah, it's it, it might easy. not be a bad thing to see. How many calls are going to these other communities? Right. That, yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, that last letter. Yeah. Um, okay. That they, that Brad provided. There was an annual count oh, the for, annual, okay. for. So the annual, yes. we will break it down. Uh, okay, that's, that's fine. Again, not to be out of line. I yeah. just was talking to Josh. Apparently, you know about Chiefs Fox and his computer issues. So as of about twenty minutes ago, yes, we're via still, text. We're still trying to. <laughs> I don't know how much luck we'll have with Highland, but some are going to try and join our reports, and we can do something like that EMS-wise, um, but probably not monthly. Probably we could do it yearly. quarterly, Okay. but absolutely yearly, annually, probably quarterly, but monthly it it's, would be... Too much. I got enough to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we may be, we may, we may be able to look into that. Um, there's a couple, the system that we use for for documenting EMS calls um, can throw out a standard report if we put the right parameters in. So um, him doing all of the fire reports, we can look at the EMS reports as well. Thank you. Good to have a report from the fire department. Uh, and to keep beating that EMS drum, that's 139 calls in the month of March, which is what, 31 days? So we're, I mean, you're talking four a day, which is... Well, Busy, you know, would, mind blowing when you which, when you really think. If I may about offer again, yeah. again speak out of turn. It, that's actually down. Yeah. To, to let everybody know where Eureka is used to being at when staffing levels are good and finances are good and everything's going, we like to be in, and we always were in the two to two hundred fifty category a month. Yep. So being at a hundred and so these last few years is significantly. And that's down. not just Eureka. I mean, COVID changed things a little bit. Right. There's a lot of services that are down, but we forever. And a decade, we're around the 200 uh, trip a month mark. And that is calls that we just which we just took. Right. Unfortunately, we've had the last several months of where we are out on a call with our crew, and we lose one to two calls to mutual aid because we have one ambulance and somebody else has to come in and take another call. So those are just the calls that we took, not the actual calls that came in. How many active EMS members do you actually have? You know offhand so we have eureka right now is about 15 to 16 career people and we're we always hover around the 20 volunteer mark i mean volunteer active volunteer is arbitrary nowadays 
decades ago, active was active. Now, oh, yeah. an active volunteer firefighter could be someone that is not just in, in Toronto Borough, the other end of the state. It could be someone, a 70-year-old that's coming in and doing computer work four times a, a month. So active volunteers, we always have around the 20 mark. And then you get volunteers that volunteer for other fire companies also, correct? <laughs> Not, it's the, it's the way of the world. We don't, um, I'm proud to say that we don't have many, Yeah. but there are fire departments that share people because there's a lack of people. And that's just all, that's just, that's just all there is to it. Cool. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wait, I have one thing. Uh, I should note too that in the next couple of weeks, um, we're, we're going over to discuss um, with some of the other municipalities in the brewery the potential impact mm -hmm. of events on traffic, EMS, yes, and fire, um, and, and trying to coordinate a response. You know, when you have an event next year of, by their own admission, of up to 15,000 people, it is not an option to just let it happen. We need to coordinate, plan, and, and, and do things in advance. So that's um, coming up, and we'll mm -hmm. be able to report on that after we meet. Talk and stand by ambulance and everything. Yeah, there's a lot that's going to have to go into it. You got to set some ground rules, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. We're going to try. <laughs> Just as a reminder that it's not technically in our municipality. So correct, yeah, but so they don't we have are to pay the overtime. So. so <laughs> I'm just going to read the report because I'll never get anything to say. <laughs> Street Department. They had the hazard road condition, no water call-outs, no red cap power, and they did all their normal stuff that they do, cleaning the streets, etc. There, how's that? <laughs> Short and sweet. And it's posted. Oh, they, yeah, and, and they cleaned, and they did the sewers, too. Mm -hmm. They flushed the sewers. Yes, we have um, fire hydrant flushing starting on the 15th as well fire for two weeks. Stuff, yes, so... Okay. If your water's dirty, just let it run. And we'll put out a savvy citizen announcement and social media as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's on the bill. That's true. Yes. I'm done. Mr. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to say, you know, well, Kevin gets to talk all the time now. So. No, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. We can switch it up. Redevelopment and revitalization. Uh, not a whole lot. We've already talked about the 215 Corbett, so... Nothing else at the moment. Like I said, you're a one-man show tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, utilities reports are posted online. We're sorry. You'll just have to figure out how much water there is used in this pot bottle to fill it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Kerr's not here. So it's just me. My um, guesstimate would be I could fill up my little cup for a million. I do not have... <laughs> The Bonner moment. All right. The reports are on. Well, we appreciate that. Before I ask for a, our, I'm sorry, that brings us to our second citizen's comment um, section of the evening. This one is, again, open to all residents of the borough. Um, to any comment that you have for anything that we discussed this evening or anything else that is on your mind. Uh, we again ask that you please stand, state your name and address for public record. And again, we have a three-minute time limit. So, Cindy, we will start with you. Okay. Time's <laughs> uh, <Sorry>, up. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Mumbrough, 530 80s, 10th Avenue. Um, just a couple things. Um, you're getting rid of the lady on 9th for the uh, security guard or whatever she is. Crossing, oh, crossing guard. guard. Okay. And that, but then you're hiring somebody else. Are you getting rid of that girl that works there? No. What what the, what this the person that we're hiring is a fill in. So when okay. so, when somebody when one of our standard crossing guards calls off, we have to have a fill in. Okay. So that's what that okay. position is. And then um, the girl that's there, where's she going? The girl where at ninth, at ninth in Corbett, Corbett. That position will go away. Yes. And she'll lose her job. Possibly, she might. Okay. We're going to have to talk about if she's going to be, if she's willing to be a fill-in okay. for the other two yeah, slots. Yeah, I just wondered. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, um, Pittsburgh History and Landmarks called me. Well, during COVID, and we didn't get to do it. And so now we're going to be doing a walking tour in Trenum on July the thirteenth. Do I need to send you a letter stating that we're going to do this? How many people do you think you're going to have? You don't know yet. I don't know. Um, 
I'll have to talk to um, Mrs. Denny down there and see just exactly how many. We were supposed to do this in 2020. Okay. And then with COVID and everything, and they're just now getting everything back on track again. I mean, I would say if it's going to be a handful of people, you know, it's it's nice for us for public safety just to know we don't necessarily have to give you permission. Now, if there's going to be a large group of people, um, then we definitely probably want to, you know, know again for public safety. But if we need to close off any parts like if you're going to be standing around and talking about something we for 20 will. 30 minutes I'm not for 20 or 30 minutes no. so yeah I think it depends on the path and how many people you're going to have okay um I don't know the path yet because I haven't had time to think about it <laughs> once, <laughs> once, once about you it. know more then either call me or we can get together and, okay. and kind of go over and see if there's going to need to be anything okay all right that's good now the third thing um that house that they tore down up to Presbyterian Church, didn't they know the water was running? Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, no my idea. God, they said there's somebody in there two, three times a week. Can't they hear the water running? It was that bad that they had to tear the house down? Well, I thought they said the water damage was from years ago, years and years and years ago. Isn't that what they oh, said? Oh, I, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Don't know. But I heard the same I just, thing about the water. What? I heard about a bust, busted pipe or a sprinkler or so who knows. And, yeah. yeah, the preacher said, well, there's somebody in there two or three days a week. Well, my God, if they're in there two or three days a week, they must not have had their hearing aids on. That is something that you're going to have to ask them. We do not have an official answer on that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when my tub shop, my tub pipe broke, mm -hmm. by the time, and I was taking my shower, and by the time, and I pushed the the plunger in the tub, but by the time I got downstairs, my entire ceiling fell in in the in the, in the, wow. room, in the dining room. Yeah, so it doesn't take long for that much water to come through. And fortunately, we got it all taken care of. But it wasn't. But it doesn't take that little bug is making me crazy. Uh, it doesn't take long for things to start clump clops and then. I just didn't know. It just seemed like it could be a bonner moment. Yeah, it could be a bonner moment. How much water they used, to, but you know, how many gallons of water? There's, any, there's nobody here from the water department. You know, I just wondered how many gallons of water they said that the borough called and said, oh, you're using an acceptable amount of water up there. We don't always know, and, and, and the way that our stuff is set up, we're not going to know for a couple of days. So oh. the, the, the way that the automated water system kind of works, I mean, when you're talking something that's a noticeable difference for the borough, you're talking hundreds if not thousands of gallons. So we don't always no like and there might be a reason for that somebody could be putting in a garden somebody could be doing something else so unless it's an excessive and i mean like crazy high number we're not going to know um if there's some sort of leak in a house oh okay we just don't so have they, that they had to be leaking a while probably right. they just right we would know if like a fire hydrant came yeah out, and it, you know it's running for 12 hours okay. you're going to see that but mm -hmm. Okay, that's all for tonight. Okay. <laughs> you took two minutes of your next month's meeting. <laughs> I, I, I have one question. Whenever you pay Second Avenue, whenever you start paving that, okay. by any chance, and you swing now uh, Second and First and Harmon Street there and pave that? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that looks right in front of my door. Potholes, old. We can look at it. So we'll, the next big, you know, so last year we did quite a bit. We did all first and we did a whole yeah, bunch of other I places. When you did first. <laughs> so this year we'll just be pothole filling and then next year we will do another, like a big round of paving. So um, basically doing it every other year, we have more money because it, it's, easier to coordinate with the um, contractors as well as the actual material yeah. so we can get more bang for our buck essentially so every other year um, potholes we can look at this year and then next year as possible well, I think they did build the potholes. well and how also we look at paving too is we have to look at the water pipes underneath mm -hmm. so we look at the condition of the water pipe because what we don't want to do is pave a road where the water pipes underneath are going to not make it another two or three years so we'd have to look at that too because then you just got to dig all that up and repave it again, and it costs get way out of control. But yes, we can look at it. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Iola, by the way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody 
writing those I O. I'll be waiting for you to come in. <laughs> okay. Grumpy grunts. How about you? <laughs> good. good. I am not I O. <laughs> <laughs> you talk more tonight than. Trying to be quiet. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Any questions, comments, concerns from anybody on council before I ask for a motion to adjourn at 7.09 p.m.? So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we all just I'm sit and wait for someone to say something. <laughs> I know. 7.09 p.m. Maggie and 